good morning. good morning. And welcome to Camdenton United Methodist Church. My name is Dennis Harper. I'm the pastor. Thank you for being here. See, when it's windy like that, you can say that the Holy Spirit is blowing people towards the building, right? <laughs> um, it's great to have you all here. Thank you for choosing to be here this Sunday. Thanks for all those that will be joining us online as well. It's a great place to be today. So I hope you grabbed a bulletin. It's got a lot of good information in there. Um, you will find a, a connection card. Please fill that out and place that in the offering plate during our time together. Um, if you have any prayer concerns, you can write that on the back there. Um, and if you're a guest, we're especially thankful for, being, for you being here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I have a few announcements as we get ready uh, for worship today and as we get together. So first off, it was a great celebration. Trunk or treat was a wonderful time on Thursday night. Um, there were lots of kids. There were like 18 uh, trunks that were passing out candy. Uh, it was a I had a great, speaking of it, I had a great time. And I, th I think the kids did too that were here. There was lots of candy. There was lots of fun. So, you know, thank you to Wendy for, for pulling that all together. And thank you for all of your help for that event. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now today, is the crop walk. And I know you're thinking, who wants to walk outside today? So I have great news for you. The crop walk is at 2 o'clock, and it's no longer at the high school track because you've already walked outside today. You know what that would be like. So we have moved it into the gym at Community Christian Church at 2 o'clock. So guess what? You now have less excuses to not go than you did earlier today. Um, but no, I, I, hope, I hope you can join, join us for that. It's, it's at 2 o'clock. Um, it makes a difference uh, asking for donations to, to help with hunger uh, worldwide. But also, uh, we're also helping a, a local agency here, and it's Share the Harvest. So uh, if you can come to the walk, you can, you can bring some canned goods. You, you can make some donations. And, and you can walk to try to just remind us that we have resources to help those across the globe who struggle with hunger. So I hope you can join us at 2 o'clock. It'll be a lot of fun. We are doing it with uh, two other churches here in town, with Community Christian and also with Our Savior's Lutheran. So it's, a, it's an ecumenical event. It's wonderful. Hope you can join us at 2 at Community Christian in their building. Uh, let's see. Mark your calendars. Sunday, November 24th at 4 p.m. is a community Thanksgiving service that's going to be at Community Christian. And um, I don't remember, it's a community service, and I'm, I'm helping, do, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't think you have to listen to me preach again. I don't think so. Uh, so, <laughs> but, but I'll be there, and I hope you can be there too as we gather with, with other Christians in our community to just celebrate Thanksgiving there on the 24th. And also, there's something else coming up that weekend um, here at the church. Marlene, what else is going on that weekend? If you want, you know. Thank you, Marlene. Yeah, my birthday is the day after Christmas, so <laughs> I, I'm sure I'm sure I'll complain about that a lot more over the next month or so. Um, it's not surprising; it's always been then. But you know, it's, it's still it's, it is what it is. All right, any other announcements before we begin today? 
Well, thank you for being here um, today. Today we're celebrating All Saints. Uh, what does that mean? Um, all, sometimes we, we think of saints as, as the Roman Catholics think of saints, as, as canonized people officially by the Catholic Church, but we United Methodists believe in saints as well. But we're not as, <laughs> there's, there's not a whole hierarchy to figure it out. You are a saint just because you are a follower of Jesus Christ. That's what it says in Paul's epistles. That's what it says. They just talk about people in the church, in the community, as saints. And so you are a saint, and today we're going to remember some of the folks in our, in our congregation who have passed away since last All Saints Day, and we'll lift them up. And I think that's an important part of who we are. Because when we lift up those folks that passed in the last year, we also remember all of the saints that have been so important to our faith over the years. As you think about it, you probably have all kinds of faces that are rolling through, rolling through your mind. The people that loved you and, were, and, and showed you Jesus Christ by how they lived and what they did. So we celebrate all of that today because we have something in our tradition called the communion of saints. It means every time we get together, we are connected with all those that went before us. Because we believe in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we stay connected even though the veil of death might separate us for a time. So today we're going to lift up those folks, we're going to celebrate them, and we're going to remember how much hope that we have in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We are supposed to be a hopeful people. So I hope today as we gather, we can once again live into that reality of the hope and love and grace that we have with one another because of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here. Let's begin worship with our prelude. Thank you, Sherry. Good morning. As you're able, please stand for our call to worship and then remain standing for our first hymn. Sing praises to God, O you saints, and give thanks to God's holy name. We exalt you, O God, for you have restored us to life. We may cry through the night, but your joy comes with the morning. You hear us, O God, for you are gracious in our distress. You turn our mourning into dance. Our, our souls, souls cannot be silent. O oh God, God, our Savior, Savior we, we give thanks, thanks to you forever. forever. Amen. Amen.
may be seated. And I'd like to invite anybody who'd like to come forward for children's time, come on up, meet you at the step right there. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, wait, just one second. <laughs> Okay, so have you ever experienced something that was difficult or maybe uncomfortable? Maybe something bad happened at school or someone said something that was mean or perhaps you got sick or hurt in some way. Maybe you've missed someone very much, like so much that it hurt to think about them. Hmm. Actually, let's try this. Raise your hand if you've ever fallen down and hurt yourself so badly that you cried. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Raise your hand if you've ever been so sad that you cried. Not me. Yeah. Oh. So raise your hand if someone has hurt your feelings and you cried. <laughs> and raise your hand if you've ever cried because someone else was sad and crying. So the thing is, is we all cry. And did you know that Jesus cried? And the shortest verse in the entire Bible says that Jesus wept. And the Bible tells of specific times that Jesus cried too. I know of at least three things that made Jesus cry. The Bible tells us that Jesus cried when he prayed for others. And the Bible also tells us that Jesus cried when he saw people who were missing out on what God wanted for them. And the Bible tells us that when Jesus saw Mary weeping because her brother had died, he cried too. Mary's brother was Jesus' friend, so Jesus wept for his friend and for humanity. And Jesus understands hard times and sad things. Still, sometimes we think that since he understands, he would spare us painful things. So I have another question. Mia's brought some stuff. Okay. And this stuff looks kind of like a funny blob, doesn't it? But actually, this blob is the result of combining several ingredients like clay minerals and water and even a little bit of paper-like stuff called cellulose fiber. Who knew? And we mix this stuff to make a clay ball. And after it's squished and molded together, the blob goes into a super hot oven. And then when it's out of the oven, you get one of these. Let's see what I have here. You might be able to recognize this a little better. This is a clay vase. You see my vase? This is my vase. You guys can pass it around if you want. So it's really pretty, and I didn't make this vase. One of our youth kids did, and I think it's a beautiful piece of art. And my youth friend makes all kinds of pretty things, like plates and coffee mugs and vases like this out of blobs like that. So now let's pretend for a minute that this pottery, wherever it's at, can talk, and it had feelings. Do you think that it would want to go into that hot oven? <laughs> So if I gave it a choice, probably not, because that doesn't sound very pleasant, does it? But only by going into the hot oven does it turn into something better than just a blob of clay. Going through hard things completes that pretty piece of art. And believe it or not, sometimes this happens to us. We might not like sad or hard things, and we don't understand why they have to happen to us. But God is always working in our lives, even when we don't understand how. 
Sometimes we pray for things and don't think God is answering, but he has his own plans, and we can trust that they are better than our plans. Sometimes life is tough, and we wish that things could happen differently, or we pray that things could be different, but our job is to trust God and let him mold and shape us and sometimes allow us to go through uncomfortable things. So this doesn't mean that things will be easy. We might still fall down and get hurt, or miss those who are far away, or have our feelings hurt, or see others who are sad and hurt. But what it does mean is that we get to get stronger and be better able to help others in their time of need. It does mean that one day we will all be made new and right again. And our lives may or may not improve on earth, but when we are God's children, we can be certain that he will take care of us. Will you pray with me? I'm just going to fold our hands. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for your promises. We know that your words are true. Even though we don't always understand your ways. Even though, we don't always understand your ways. Even though oh, you tell us things will work for good. Thank you for your faithfulness. We love you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How does it make you feel when you know someone is praying for you? Doesn't it, doesn't it make a positive difference? Doesn't it give you some strength? It doesn't solve... Sometimes it might solve what's going on, but oftentimes it doesn't. But it reminds us that we're not alone and that people love us and whatever we're facing, we face it together. So that's one of the reasons that we pray together every Sunday. Because uh, there's always some things that we would like to be better. There's always suffering that we would like to be alleviated. We'd always like uh, to, to find forgiveness and grace and reconciliation and all the things that Jesus brings to us. So as we pray together today, uh, what's on your heart? Who are the people that you have loved, that have loved you? Some of them, might, hopefully, might be sitting right next to you. Some of them have gone on before um, and are with Christ now. But either way, uh, when we pray, we do it together. So you'll see a long list of folks to hold in your prayers in your bulletin today. Remember those folks in your prayers throughout the week. It's a long list, but I think you can handle it. <laughs> there are a lot of things on your heart that I know you haven't spoken today, but I know God can handle those too. So... Is there anything you need to lift up today? Let's, let's lift up Frank today. He's really under the weather with sinuses. Okay, so Frank's got a really bad sinus infection, probably. Yeah. And that's no fun, so we yeah, want to lift... I have to try to get him to the doctor. Pray for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> got... God be with you, Janet. <laughs> so please remember Frank Short today. Yes. Great. Well, we Patty just lifts up a, a celebration of, of, of Pat's son, Tim, who has, brain, who has a, a brain tumor. 
Um, but right now he's doing well and is able to enjoy his life and his family. And they just had a great visit with him a couple weeks ago. So uh, that's, just, that's just a joy. Thank you for sharing that today. Well, I hope that you can remember um, this last week was great with, with Trunk or Treat and all the kids and families that were here for it. Uh, it was just a time of joy. And I'll probably mention it again at Offering, but it was, it was great. When that kind of stuff happens, <laughs> celebrate it. It's great stuff. So I hope whatever you're facing today, um, you know that you're not alone, that Christ is with you, that we're with you, and that we get to be a blessing to the world. It's a wonderful privilege and responsibility. So God loves you, and so do we. Let's go to God in prayer. Oh, gracious and loving God, we thank you for your loving embrace. So often we find that embrace in the people around us. And sometimes we don't. So, Lord, we, we ask for your forgiveness for the times that we have not opened our arms wide to others as you do to us. Forgive us for that and open our hearts once again to the promises that you place before us that make a difference, especially in the midst of, of life, for those that are suffering, for those that are sick, for our loved ones on hospice or facing surgery, for our loved ones that are, that are ill and under the weather. But Lord, push us out beyond those that are closest to us, that we might also have compassion and longing for healing and wholeness to our community and to our world. Lord, in the midst of, in the midst of war and uncertainty and disagreement, Lord, we lift up our country and we pray for peace across the globe. May we be people of compassion and reconciliation. We thank you for all of those in our lives who have shown us your heart by the ways they loved us, by the ways they interacted with the world that pointed us to Christ. So Lord, we thank you for all the saints that worship with us right now. So Lord, be with us today. Remind us that we are yours that you love us, and we have the privilege to love others through you. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, we remember the saints of our congregation that have passed away since last All Saints Day. Um, since I am new around here, uh, sadly, I, don't, I was not able to know all of these folks, but I am sure that many of you do. And so as we read their names today, and as we toll a bell in their honor, remember them. And remember all of those that have gone before us. If you knew these folks well, if they made a difference in your life, you are invited to stand when we toll the bell for them. William Bates.
Maxine Seiler. Arlene Chubbuck. Daryl Walden. Jim Bowery. And now we toll just for those who have loved us and now find their rest in the Lord. To the glory of God. Amen. Please stand. You're able for the reading of God's word. This morning's scripture comes from the 11th chapter of John, verses 32 to 44. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of a blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The word of God for the people of God. God. You may be seated. The raising of Lazarus, it's a, uh, it's a very emotional story, isn't it? And we didn't read quite everything that was there in, in John 11 about it. We kind of jumped in right at the, right at the not quite the beginning. Um, it's strange because Jesus and the disciples are aware of Lazarus' illness. They've heard it. And they kind of dilly-dally getting there. They don't rush to him. And Jesus just, the disciples kind of like, uh, why, why aren't we going faster? He's just like, don't worry, it'll be fine. So then when he gets there, Lazarus has already died. Martha and Mary, who were good, Martha and Mary and Lazarus were close friends of Jesus. Um, they, they tell him what's happened. Of course, he's already aware that Lazarus has gone to see. And Jesus, he was, he's even like telling people when they're on their way there, when they, he's just like, don't worry, he's just gone to sleep. So it almost feels like, yeah, is is Jesus really taking this seriously? But you know he is, because when he gets there, and he talks to Martha, and he talks to Mary, and and they even start saying, Lord, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. And as they are weeping, and others are weeping, guess what Jesus does? He also weeps. He weeps for the loss of his friend. He weeps because of the great sadness that's around them. And I think the wonder of this story, yes, Jesus raises a man from the dead. That's a Jesus thing to do, right? 
You kind of expect it. Like, yeah, it's his friend. He's going to raise him from the dead. It's almost anticlimactic in a way, isn't it? Maybe that's a bit too far, but it, it kind of feels that way. I mean, you know what's going to happen. This is not a new story to you. I mean, pop culture, you talk about Lazarus, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's when people rise from the dead. Right? So, you know what Jesus is going to do, but if he knows he's going to do it, why in the world is he weeping? I think that's what I was really thinking about this week as, as, I, as I was contemplating this scripture, is Jesus knows what he's going to do. He knew it while they were on the way, and yet when he gets there, he cries as much as everybody else. And he walks with them and weeps with them. And, they're, and listen, Lazarus' sisters are pretty honest with Jesus. They're like, if you had just been here, Lord, this wouldn't have happened to us. And Jesus weeps and walks with them and just says, oh, but, you know, don't you believe what I've told you? Now, one of the interesting things is uh, when Jesus goes to the tomb and tells them to, to roll the stone away, <clears throat> and don't you love uh, Martha's response to that? When she goes, I'm Jesus. He's been dead for four days. Very practical response, isn't it? He's been dead for four days. We should leave the stone in place. And he says, no, you guys need to move the stone. And it says that he's disturbed in spirit when, he, when, when they're moving that stone. And he's, it's an interesting thing because the, the Greek there can almost make you sound like, like Jesus is mad. Do you like your Jesus mad? No. I mean, Jesus doesn't get mad very often, even though sometimes I think we live into the few places where, where he was mad, right? I mean, um, sometimes we're like, Jesus overturns tables. So anytime you're a jerk, you're like, well, that one time when Jesus overturned tables. Don't live into that, right? Sometimes I think we have some Christian brothers and sisters that they really like mean Jesus. I'm really more of a, a weeping Jesus kind of guy, to be honest with you. But he's, so it's strange to me that it says he's, the way, uh, the translation that, that Dave read from today said, he was disturbed in spirit. What's that mean? Well, I'm really not completely sure other than I think Jesus was confronted by death and didn't like it. And I kind of go, wait a second. There have been many times in my life where I have been confronted with death and difficult things. And you know what? I did not like it. Have you ever been disturbed in spirit? You never said it that way. That's a church way to say it, right? I mean, but you've been ticked, haven't you? Angry? Beside yourself? For the things that have happened? Yes, you have been. I know it. And I would say, when Jesus loses his friend Lazarus, that's exactly what he's dealing with. He's weeping and he's angry, and he's ticked, and he doesn't like it. And so what does he do? He shouts, well, he shouts, it's, it's the only thing Jesus possibly can do, right? He shouts into the tomb, Lazarus, come out. Isn't that great? And Dave did a great job. He, he made a booming uh, voice. Isn't that how you always hear that? Like, he's shouting into a cave. Maybe it even echoed, right? Lazarus, come out, come out, come out. Wouldn't that be awesome? I don't know if it happened that way. I don't have that on biblical authority, okay? But it'd be cool um, if it echoes. And then Lazarus comes back, I'm here. Wouldn't that be, that'd be great? Okay, I've never heard it said that way. Uh, I should really write this stuff down before I start talking, right? <laughs> Off on a tangent again. But yeah, I mean, he shouts into the tomb, and Lazarus stumbles out of there. And Jesus says, unbind him and let him go. Why does he need to be unbound? Because his body has been wrapped. He's been essentially embalmed. And they've wrapped him all up. They threw him in the tomb. And now, you know, listen, I've never been uh, embalmed before. Um, but I have a feeling once you're embalmed and you're raised from the dead, walking is difficult and you can't see anything because you've got everything wrapped around you. 
So Jesus says, unbind him and let him go. It's a powerful story. And so on All Saints Day, we lift it up because we know Jesus is one for life and resurrection and hope. And yet, even in the midst of that, Jesus is also one who understands the brokenness and pain of the world. And the way Jesus confronts it is by going through it. You can see that in the story, can't you? Jesus doesn't just walk with the people and say, guys, will you quit crying? Because isn't that sometimes what you want to say when a bunch of people are crying? Because you're uncomfortable. Have you ever been in a bunch where a bunch of people are upset and you just don't know what to do with it? Can you imagine that? And so uh, Jesus could have showed up knowing what he's going to do and been like, guys, get over yourselves. You don't need to be this sad. Look what I'm going to do. But that's not how Jesus handles it. He goes through it with the people. He cries. He's angry. That's our Savior. I hope your takeaway from this isn't that, well, Lazarus got raised from the dead, so why doesn't Jesus just solve all my problems just like that? Well, you know, um, in the Gospel of John, is the one gospel where Jesus doesn't do a whole lot of miracles, if you've ever read it all the way through. He only does a few. Um, and every time he does, there's supposed to be this sign of who Jesus is and why Jesus has come. And raising the dead is one of them. Now you have to remember that when Lazarus is raised from the dead in, in the gospel of John, do you want to know what the, it was the impetus for the Jewish authorities to really want to get rid of Jesus? You know what it was? It was when he raised Lazarus from the dead. It's really hard to, to not let, that people aren't going to notice that a dead man is now walking around and Jesus did it. But it's interesting, even though that may be one thing that really made the religious authorities upset, um, Jesus doesn't use this as some springboard to greater things. He heads to Jerusalem. It's Holy Week. He goes in, everybody's all excited, and he leaves Jerusalem carrying a cross. So remember, we have a Savior who goes through it with us. Jesus suffers and dies. God's grace is effective. God's love is effective because God understands the things that we go through the pain, the brokenness. I think even God understands our really bad decision making. Have you ever made a bad decision that hurt other people or hurt you? Have you done that before? How many of those have you done this morning, right? I think God understands us and yet redeems us not by solving all those issues, but by seeing us through to the other side. Why does God do it that way? Well, I think that's the shape of our lives. You go through it, and you come out on the other side, and even if you go through it, and it kills you, God still sees you through it, don't you see? We lift up saints today because the resurrection from the dead is a big deal. Not just because we get to be, have life in heaven, which I'm sure is great. I don't know. I mean, I can think of, I mean, can you think of lots of things you want to do for eternity? Um, I mean, I figure the first hundred years it's like, well, at least I don't have taxes anymore, right? Or, or you're like, uh, you know... <laughs> Um, death and taxes. There's no death and taxes, right? I mean, but, but I think that gets old after a while, doesn't it? What are you going to do for eternity? I don't know. I don't know what heaven is. I mean, it can't just be like one big slip and slide. Like I said, fun for a while, but maybe you can do it without getting strawberries and stuff. I don't know. I'm just thinking, you're like, 
Dennis, what do you want to do in heaven? I'm not sure. I don't know how it works. The only thing I know is because God sees us through it, heaven comes down to earth right now. And what's heaven to us? I think any time that we are loved and we realize we're not alone, where we can find forgiveness and reconciliation, where we can realize that even the death of our loved ones, it brings us to our knees, but yet God helps us to eventually be able to stand up again, that's a little piece of heaven right here on earth. When we can come together on Sunday morning and for a moment feel joy and peace in a group of people where not everybody agrees with one another, hey, I know the election's coming up, I love you, don't, don't be dumb, okay? Whatever you do, just don't be dumb. Um, do, do what you feel is right, but, but don't be mean to the people, other people, okay? It looks bad for Jesus. And, and, and if, you know, if we can just be a little bit more like Jesus every day, then guess what? That's a little bit of heaven that's come down to earth that we experience together. Because listen, as great as it would be that Christianity would be a solitary religion, where we can just figure things out for ourselves and be okay, I'm afraid God didn't put us together that way. Now listen, sometimes I'm sick of people too, but you know what? In the end, we need each other. That's why God's grace and forgiveness and reconciliation is so important for us, because you can only make it by yourself for so long. So I don't know what heaven is like. But I know that when God's love ruminates within a group of people, there's nothing better. And so we celebrate those that have gone before us but that have not left us behind. Isn't that good news? So, yeah, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. What else is he going to do? He's Jesus. But you know what? Jesus walks with us and sees us through a stuff that's just as bad or worse. And we find life and hope, and we do it together. Amen to that. Amen. Well, it's, it's, it's time to take the offering. And so I'd like to invite the ushers forward, and uh, they can start walking while I talk. Um, today... We celebrate things like trunk or treat that happened in our lives. The good things from the last week. Celebrate that while we take the offering today. Thank, thank, thank God for the wonderful things that have happened in your life. Also, uh, thank God for all the wonderful people that have gone before that loved you and didn't have to. Now, sometimes saints are people that had to love you, but they did, so well, they did it well anyway, right? Whoever loved you and showed you Christ, give God thanks for that today and know that they are still with us. We have, we have hope and promise in Jesus Christ. Thank you for all the ways you give to our church. You, get, you, you bless the world. Um, let's pray. Gracious and loving God, for all the ways that you pour your love out on us, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for all of the people you bring into our lives that have poured your love out on us. We give you thanks. Lord, see us through our troubles. See us through our pain. And once again, bring us at home with you and one another to a place where love truly reveals itself through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Maybe seated. <laughs> I mean, there's always there's always this uh, this this little gnawing to see how long will they stand up if I forget to say that. But <laughs> that one I really did forget to tell you. But this isn't this isn't the first time the pastors forgot to tell you to sit down. So you're okay. Um, we're celebrating Holy Communion today, and to do that. Um, I just want to remind you that uh, in our United Methodist tradition, everyone is welcome to Holy Communion. Um, you don't have to be a member of our church or United Methodist Church or really any church. Um, we invite you forward because the grace and love of Jesus Christ is for everybody. So if you'd like to come forward, you are welcome to come forward. Um, we have, and, and we have the... The wafers that we'll have are those are those are gluten free, right? And then um, if you don't, then if you want, if you don't want to, you know, somebody else touching your stuff, we, we've got these all in ones, which is, it's not the best way to do communion, but it's there. And then, um, basically, what I'm saying is, we're trying to live out the idea that everybody is welcome to communion by what we serve and the embrace that we give you 
in our church. So if you'd like to come forward for communion today, please, you are welcome here. And a reminder that, you know, when we take Holy Communion, uh, we remember, this is one place where we remember that not everything's right in our lives. That, yeah, we need some forgiveness. We need to refocus. We need to once again embrace the love and grace that saves us through Jesus Christ. So don't forget, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Don't forget that. And everybody is worthy of communion. Why? Because God says so. So the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread of hope which is broken for us. And the cup of salvation which is poured out for us. I invite those that are helping to serve Holy Communion to please come forward. The table is prepared. Please come.
this All Saints Day, I was just reminded of uh, Katie, who was a, a saint from uh, Sedalia, where I served. And uh, I could, she would always point out that if we were running late, I could do the communion liturgy really, really fast. Um, and I can. Matter of fact, I try to read it so that I don't go too fast. Um, so today I did it, I tried to do it slow um, on All Saints Day because Katie would always tease me that I could do that awfully fast when I felt like I needed to. So today, slow down, embrace the love and grace of Christ. Remember all of those that have gone before us, that have blessed, that have blessed you and reminded you of Christ's love. And that also means, you know, consider how are you sharing the love of Christ with the people in your life? Do they even see Christ in you? I know that they do. But let's go and make a difference in the world in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.